Let's get started on your notes over factoring a difference of squares or a difference of two squares. So the first thing I want to do is I've got these sets of binomials here and we're going to multiply them. So how do we multiply binomials? We use FOIL. You might also use the box, which looks like this. And for example, on number one, you could do 2x plus 3 times 2x plus 3 and multiply that way. Whatever works for you. I'm going to use FOIL today. So first, outside, inside, last. So on number one, 2x times 2x is 4x squared. 2x times negative 3 is negative 6x. Those are my outside terms, my inside terms. 3 times 2x is positive 6x. And 3 times negative 3 is negative 9. And then what do we do at this point? We simplify by combining like terms. Well, negative 6x and positive 6x, those are like terms. But when I combine them, I get 0. So they actually cancel out. So I'm left with 4x squared minus 9. Let's do the next one. 3x times 3x is 9x squared. 3x times negative 5 is negative 15x. 5 times 3x is positive 15x. And 5 times negative 5 is negative 25. And we're going to do the same thing to this problem. We're going to combine like terms. So my like terms are the two in the middle. And what do you notice? They're the same but opposite, so they cancel out. Their sum is zero, and I'm left with 9x squared minus 25. All right, let's do the next one. And again, we need to recall that product rule. 5a squared times 5a squared is 25a to the fourth. 5a squared times negative 4b is negative 20a squared b. Inside terms, 4b times 5a squared is positive 20a squared b. 4b times negative 4b is negative 16b squared. And then I can combine the terms that are alike. When they're alike, they have the same last name, as I like to say, or same variables and exponents, so the a squared b's. And I've got negative 20 and positive 20. So what happens? Again, they cancel out. And I'm left with 25a to the fourth minus 16b squared. So what happened in all of these examples? Well, we got rid of our two middle terms because I had one positive and one negative of the same amount. And I was left with a two-term binomial, 4x squared minus 9, 9x squared minus 25, 25a to the fourth minus 16b squared. What did I start with? Well, 2x plus 3 times 2x minus 3. 3x plus 5 times 3x minus 5. 5a squared plus 4b times 5a squared minus 4b. So we had the same terms, but one was a plus, one was a minus. Okay, so my students call this the plus minus one. So when we factor a difference of squares, we're actually going to be, when given this, we're going to factor this so that we get that, okay? So we're gonna go from our answer to the problem, basically, from one, two, from one through three. So when I factor a difference of squares and I break a, an expression down, a squared minus b squared factors as a plus b times a minus b. So we're gonna be doing the reverse of what we just did. Now, the key to factoring a difference of squares is recognizing you have a difference of squares, which is really hard for a lot of students to do. This is super, super easy once you recognize it. But if you don't recognize it, that's the hard part. So you should see a list of perfect squares on the back of your sheet. If you don't know your perfect squares, this is something good to refer to. Okay, all of these in the right column are perfect squares. That means 1 times 1 is 1, 2 times 2 is 4, or I can say it like this, 3 squared is 9, 4 squared is 16, 5 squared, you get the idea. Likewise, if I take the square root of a number in the right column, such as the square root of 1, I get 1. The square root of 4, 
I get 2. The square root of 9, I get 3, and so on and so forth. Okay, so we really need to know our perfect squares today. So the problems you're about to see might look slightly different than what you have on your sheet. All the content is the same. The actual problems are all the same. So just follow along and take your notes. Let's start with number one. If I'm factoring x squared minus 9, so when you see a difference of squares, something you're looking for is that you have two terms, 1, 2, and a subtraction sign in the, in the middle. So there's that difference of perfect squares. x squared is a perfect square because x times x is x squared. 9 is a perfect square because 3 times 3 is 9. So this is what I'm looking for when I factor a difference of squares. If you struggle with your perfect squares, I do have a list of your perfect squares up to 25 um, on the back page of these notes. So that can help you if you have a, a table of perfect squares, if you have not memorized them already. So again though, if you want to recognize their perfect squares, you really need to memorize your perfect squares. So what do I do? I take the square root of both terms. Square root of x squared is x. Square root of 9 is 3. So this factors x plus 3, x minus 3. Number 2, we're going to do the same thing. If I take the square root of both, the square root of a squared is a, the square root of 36 is 6. So this is going to factor a plus 6, a minus 6. Again with number 3, I notice these are two, or this is a difference of squares. I've got two perfect squares, and then there's my difference. So two terms, perfect squares, and there's a difference. So when I take the square root of both terms, I get b plus 2 times b minus 2. Let's move on to the next set. Notice I have a coefficient in front of my variable now, but it's still a perfect square. Four is a perfect square because 2 squared is 4. x squared is a perfect square. x times x is x squared. 25 is a perfect square. 5 times 5 is 25, and then there's my difference. Every single number and variable must be a perfect square in order to factor this difference of squares. So I take the square root of everything. 4x squared, square root is 2x. 25, square root is 5. This factor is 2x plus 5 times 2x minus 5. Let's move on to number 5. Again, I notice 9 is a perfect square. y squared is a perfect square. 1 is also a perfect square. The square root of 9y squared is 3y. And the square root of 1 is 1. Now, I'm going to write it in this order this time just to show you that it doesn't matter which order you write it in. If I wrote 3y plus 1 times 3y minus 1, that's the same thing as 3y minus 1 times 3y plus 1. It doesn't matter the order in which you write it in. It does matter, however, that you put 3y as your first term and 1 as your second term. Okay, let's go on to number 6. Again, I notice every number and variable is a perfect square, so I'm going to take the square root of everything. The square root of 16x squared is 4x, and the square root of 81 is 9. 4x plus 9 times 4x minus 9. Let's move on to number 7. 100 minus 49b squared. Again, I notice every number and variable is a perfect square, and there's my difference. So I'm going to take the square root of everything. The square root of 100 is 10. 49b squared is 7b. So 10 plus 7b and 10 minus 7b. And again, if I wrote 10 minus 7b times 10 plus 7b, that doesn't matter. But I need to make sure that that 10 is the first term in each binomial. Let's move on to number 8. Again, I notice two terms, there's my difference, everything is a perfect square, so I'm asking myself, is this a difference of squares? Well, every number and every variable is a perfect square, so I can take the square root of everything, and I get 5x plus 9. I'm sorry, that's not right. 
I'm going to get 5x plus 3 times 5x minus 3. And let's move on to number 9. I do notice everything is a perfect square, so how is this going to factor? Wait a second. That's not a difference. That's a plus sign. This cannot factor as a difference of squares because it needs to be a difference. It need, we need to have a subtraction sign in our problem. I don't see that here. This cannot factor. I can't factor out a GCF. They have nothing in common. So this is just prime. That is the, uh, that's just the most that that can factor. It can't factor any more than that. So let's move on to number 10. Again, I notice there's my difference. Okay, we're looking for that now, right? We want to make sure we have a difference. Everything is a perfect square. 4, x squared, 121, y squared. They're all a perfect square. So I'm going to take the square root of everything and I get 2x plus 11y times 2x minus 11y. So this example introduced a variable in your second term and it's completely fine, but it also needs to be a perfect square. Let's move on to number 11. Again, we notice everything is a perfect square. How is this going to factor? 6a plus 5b times 6a minus 5b. Again, if you wrote 6a minus 5b times 6a plus 5b, that, that's totally fine. Looking at number 12, there's my difference. There's two terms here. X to the fourth, is that a perfect square? Well, I know 64 is. I know Y squared is. I know 1 is. X to the fourth. Well, X squared times X squared is X to the fourth. So this is going to factor 8X squared plus Y times 8X squared minus Y. Look at that. All right, so let's move on and let's put it all together. Okay, so we're going to factor out a GCF first, then factor a difference of squares if possible. So you always want to make sure that you're looking for a GCF first. Anytime you factor, you're trying to factor out a GCF first every single time. That's what you're looking for. You may not always be able to factor out a GCF, but you're looking. So I'm looking at this first example on number 13. I have two terms here. But I notice that both of these numbers are even, so they're definitely both divisible by 2. They're also divisible by 4. Hey, they're also divisible by 8, so I can factor out an 8. They don't have any variables in common, so I can't factor out any variables. When I factor out an 8, I'm left with 4x squared minus y squared. And then I notice what I'm left with is a difference of squares. I have two terms, I have a difference, everything's a perfect square, so I can now factor that 2x plus y times 2x minus y, and that is my answer. 8 times 2x plus y times 2x minus y. Do not forget your GCF when you write your answers. A lot of students want to do that, and it's wrong. You need to, fact you, you need to include that in your answer. Let's go to number 14. I'm looking at these two terms. I see they're both even. I can definitely factor out a 2. And in fact, that is my GCF of both terms. When I factor out a 2, I'm left with 36x squared minus 25. And I notice that I have a difference of squares here. I recognize that that's a difference of squares. Once you recognize it, it's super easy to factor. 2 times, when I take the square root of everything, I get 6x plus 5 times 6x minus 5. Let's move on to number 15. I notice I have a GCF between these two terms. Again, they're both even, so I know they're divisible by 2. Are they divisible by anything else, anything bigger? Because I need the greatest number that factor that they have in common, and that is actually 4. So when I factor out a 4, I'm left with 25a squared minus 36 and oh would you look at that I notice we have a difference of squares so I'm going to factor this 4 times 5a plus 6 times 5a minus 6 and there we go let's move on to number 16 
I'm looking at the coefficients and I'm noticing, remember these numbers in front of the variables or to the left of the variable, those are what are called coefficients. So I'm looking at the coefficients and I'm noticing both are divisible by three. But we also have variables in both terms. So I'm gonna take the one with the smallest exponent, that's three X, and I'm gonna factor out a three X. What am I left with? Nine X squared minus four. And I notice we have a difference of squares. 3x plus 2 times 3x minus 2. Let's move on to number 17. When I factor out the GCF of both, if you want to pause this video and practice factoring out the GCF first, I would recommend doing that right now. But when I factor out the GCF, the GCF is 8y. What am I left with? 25y to the fourth minus 16. And look at there, we have a difference of squares. Two terms, they're subtracted. Every number and variable is a perfect square. So it can factor 5y squared plus 4 times 5y squared minus 4. Let's move on to number 18. Whew, this looks like a lot. Okay, so when I'm factoring out a GCF, they're both even, and uh, the second term has a two in it, so I know I can't factor anything bigger than a two, so I'm just gonna factor out a two. And now let's look at our variables. This has x to the fourth, this has x squared. They have x's in common. What's the most that I can factor out? Well, I'm gonna take the one with the smallest exponent. And what am I left with? 81x squared minus y squared. And again, I recognize I have a difference of squares, so I've factored out a 2x squared. When I factor this difference of squares, I'm left with 9x plus y times 9x minus y. And there's your notes over factoring a difference of squares. If you have trouble factoring out a GCF first, you can refer to my previous video over factoring a GCF. And here's your, your table of perfect squares 1 through 25 um, if that helps you I find it very helpful for students who haven't memorized their perfect squares but remember your perfect squares that will help you out when you factor a difference of squares